Several classification systems have been proposed for ankle fractures. Here is a quick review of the anatomy of the ankle. The fibula and tibia come together over the talus to form the ankle joint. The distal end of the fibula is known as the lateral malleolus. Its counterpart, formed by the tibia, is the medial malleolus. The tibia also forms a ridge in the back of the ankle known as the posterior malleolus. The tibia and fibula together form a mortise, which receives the talus. The weight-bearing portion of the tibia is known as the plafond, which means ceiling. Several ligaments secure the bones of the ankle together. For simplicity's sake, we'll call them the lateral ankle ligaments, which primarily prevent excessive supination. The deltoid or medial ligament, which primarily prevents excessive pronation and the syndesmosis, which stabilizes the ankle mortise by preventing gapping between the tibia and fibula. The log hansen classification of ankle fractures is based on the mechanism of injury that results in different fracture patterns. In other words, in which direction is the ankle twisted? The ankle may be twisted inward or supinated, or it may be twisted outward or pronated. For each twisting direction, the ankle fracture advances through stages of severity, resulting in additional injuries to the structures of the ankle. The Weber classification of ankle fractures is based on where the fracture is located on the fibula in relation to the syndesmosis and the joint. Supination adduction is an inward twist of the ankle. As the ankle twists inward, it yanks on the lateral ligaments, resulting in either rupture of the lateral ligaments or a transverse fracture of the lateral malleolus below the level of the syndesmosis. If the deforming force continues, the fracture progresses to stage two, in which the medial malleolus also fractures in an oblique or vertical pattern. Supination adduction fractures are synonymous with Weber type A fractures, because the fracture occurs below the syndesmosis. If these fractures do not advance to stage two, in which the medial malleolus fractures as well, they are usually stable and do not require surgery. Supination external rotation injuries occur when the ankle is twisted inward and an externally rotating force is applied. At first, this results in tearing of the anterior tibiofibular ligament the anterior portion of the syndesmosis. If the deforming force continues, the fracture progresses to stage two, an oblique or spiral fracture of the fibula at the level of the joint and syndesmosis. If the deforming force persists, the fracture progresses to stage three and the remaining syndesmotic ligament is torn or the posterior malleolus is fractured. If the fracture progresses to stage four, the medial ligament pulls at the medial malleolus until either the medial ligament tears or the medial malleolus fractures in a transverse pattern. Supination external rotation injuries are synonymous with Weber type B fractures because the fibula fracture occurs at the level of the joint and syndesmosis. Isolated, minimally displaced fractures of the lateral malleolus may not require surgery. However, if there are more than three millimeters of shortening or displacement of the lateral malleolus, if there is any widening of the ankle mortise, if there is a fracture of the medial malleolus, or if there is a rupture of the medial ligament, surgery is usually recommended. Pronation abduction is an outward twist of the ankle. The medial ligament pulls at the medial malleolus until it ruptures or a transverse fracture of the medial malleolus occurs. At stage two, the posterior malleolus is fractured as well. At stage three, an oblique fracture of the fibula occurs above the level of the syndesmosis. Pronation external rotation injuries occur when the ankle is twisted outward and an externally rotating force is applied. At stage one, the medial ligament pulls at the medial malleolus until it ruptures or a transverse fracture of the medial malleolus occurs. If the fracture progresses to stage two, the anterior tibiofibular ligament, the anterior portion of the syndesmosis, is torn, resulting in widening of the ankle mortise.
At stage three, an oblique or spiral fracture occurs above the level of the syndesmosis. At stage four, the posterior tibiofibular ligament, the remaining portion of the syndesmosis, is torn. When pronation fractures involve the lateral malleolus, they are synonymous with Weber type C fractures because the fibula fracture occurs above the level of the joint and syndesmosis. Isolated, minimally displaced fractures of the medial malleolus may not require surgery. However, if there is significant displacement of the medial malleolus, if there is any widening of the ankle mortis, or if the fracture involves both malleoli, surgery is usually recommended. A thorough grasp of these classification systems can help an orthopedic surgeon understand the dynamics involved in ankle fractures so they can be more effectively treated. However, the average healthcare provider or patient can be satisfied with a more simplified explanation based on the anatomic or descriptive classification of ankle fractures. They include isolated lateral malleolus fractures, isolated medial malleolus fractures, bimalleolar fractures, and trimalleolar fractures. Non-displaced unimalleolar fractures are typically stable and can be treated non-operatively. Unimalleolar fractures with more than three millimeters of displacement or shortening are usually treated surgically. Unimalleolar fractures associated with disruption of the syndesmosis are evidenced by widening of the ankle mortis. The talus shifts laterally, resulting in increased medial clear space on x-rays. These fractures are also unstable and require surgical fixation. Bimalleolar and trimalleolar fractures are inherently unstable and are usually treated with surgical fixation. If x-rays demonstrate a fracture involving only one malleolus, the fracture is less than three millimeters displaced or shortened, and there is no widening of the mortise or shifting of the talus, the fracture can usually be treated with immobilization in a cast or boot. Otherwise, the fracture likely requires surgical fixation.